It's a sinister tale involving a multi-million rand superyacht, two South African engineers and a flamboyant politician from Equatorial Guinea. Teodoro Nguema Obiang Mangu flaunts his riches at every opportunity. In fact, so attached to the trappings of wealth is this West African country's vice president that it seems he'll do anything to hold on to them, even if it means orchestrating a treacherous transnational plot. It's the middle of the night on the 9th of February. Two South African engineers are dragged from their hotel rooms in the West African state of Equatorial Guinea, detained on drug charges. He phoned me to say to me, I don't think I'll ever see you again. And then the phone was taken away from him. La policía ha detenido a dos sudafricanos por fumar la cocaína. Los dos... A local news channel says they were in possession of bags of white powder. No, uh, never in my life. That's not mine. It's definitely not mine. Protesting their innocence, they're at the mercy of a country with a questionable human rights record. When was the last time you saw your dad here in George? The 8th January. Their detention thrust them to the center of an international controversy. Is it possible they're being used as pawns in a cruel game of tit for tat? Victims of a powerful and angry elite. Peter Huxham and Frederick Potrita worked for the Dutch oil and gas company SBM Offshore. When they were arrested at their hotel in Equatorial Guinea's capital, Malabo, they were preparing to return home to South Africa. Peter's partner, Kathy McConaughey, was at home when she got the news of the arrest. Got a phone call on the 9th to say, Kath, something strange has happened. They're knocking on my door and they want to take me away for questioning about drugs. Now, yes. when you hear drugs, what came to your mind? Obviously, they got the wrong person because we, we don't do drugs. And that's why I said, I'll just go along and see what they want. So you'd never heard from him again since the 9th of February? 2253, yes. Amazingly, Peter and Frederick had never met before. They worked in different offshore divisions. Their families, now bound by a shared trauma, are trying to figure out what happened. When was the last phone call that your family got from your dad? I was by the hotel and um, I had nothing to say, like, I'm going to see you tomorrow. When you got the phone call with the news about his arrest, what's the first thing that came to your mind? I don't know what I'm going to do. My pa is not enough to do with such a good thing. So we don't know how to do it, we don't know how to do it, we don't know how to do it. The men's lawyer appointed by SBM Offshore says his clients unequivocally deny the accusations. Equatorial Guinea was one of Africa's poorest countries until oil was discovered in the 1990s. Its president, Teodoro Obiang Nguyen Basongo, is among the world's longest serving rulers and one of its richest. He calls oil manna from heaven, partnering with big multinationals to extract it. Peter works offshore five weeks on, five weeks off. We do lots of traveling together. We have lots of fun moments. If he's out on the water, he's very happy. The grandchildren play a big part in our lives. Yeah. Kathy and Peter live in Langaban on the Cape West Coast. Peter's quiet. He is very giving. He wants to just do good for everybody. Frederick Potrita's home is in George, in the Southern Cape. The most of the time we are going to go to the house, or we are going to camp, or we are going to the house. In this close-knit family, Jolene and her father are inseparable. He is the man that I always have to look at. He is beautiful. He is a man, a man. He is always there for me, always there, a fresh color. The families were told Peter and Frederick were sent to Black Beach, a prison with a sinister reputation and one that gained notoriety after the controversial arrest of another South African a decade earlier. To survive one night in that place is a miracle. You know, you've got murderers, the women get raped, the children get raped. 
Daniel Janssen van Rensburg had been dumped into Black Beach after a deal with one of the president's relatives, a prominent local businessman, turned sour. But his actual jailer appears to have been a far more influential figure, the vice president and the man in charge of the country's security and prisons. Oh, and he also happens to be the president's son. His name is Teodor Ngema Obiang Mangu, simply known as Teodorin. They think they're above the law. The family, there's no democracy as such. Uh, and um, once the law doesn't suit them, then they just step above the law. Daniel believes he'd never have been freed had it not been for a now former judge. Former because he fled Equatorial Guinea after speaking out against corruption in the judicial system. At the time, Juan Carlos Ondo Ange was president of the Supreme Court and he found Daniel was being held without evidence. Daniel case should have been brought to justice as an alleged breach of a contract, not as a criminal offense. There was uh, no need to violate his rights as a citizen uh, to be in prison. So is it fair to say that Daniel was actually innocent? Of course he was innocent. It was a, a business matter. This is not a criminal issue. And nobody should be kept in prison for that. After more than 400 days in appalling conditions, Daniel was freed and allowed to return home. He recorded his experience in a book. It was really very difficult, you know, because you've got to remember all the bad things and you've got to concentrate on the very things that you try to forget. But could these two strikingly similar but apparently unconnected incidents be linked? Is it possible Peter and Frederick are paying a grotesque price for Daniel's pursuit of justice? When Daniel was released, he set about suing uh, the vice president, being Theodore and Obiang, on the basis that he had been the minister in charge of prisons and security at the time. Errol Alston has fought similar cases across Africa and became an advisor in Daniel's case for damages against Teodorin. It took five years, but in a landmark ruling by the Western Cape High Court, Daniel was awarded 39 million rand for illegal incarceration in Black Beach and torture. To settle the court order, two Cape Town properties belonging to Teodorin, including an opulent mansion, were attached in 2021. Daniel, though, has yet to see a cent of the damages awarded. What was causing all these delays? The vice president appealing every step of the way. Every judgment he appealed, and um, that uh, resulted in enormous delays. But then came an incident that appears to have sealed Peter and Frederick's fate. On the 7th of February this year, a super yacht called Blue Shadow, believed to be another of Teodorin's many assets, was attached in Cape Town. The move outraged the Playboy vice president, who appeared to threaten reprisals in this tweet. What do you make of the tweets um, following the seizing of the Blue Shadow? Well, it's hardly coincidental. There clearly is a link. Teodorin has been accused of corruption in various countries and is famous for his lavish lifestyle. Handed a five-year suspended jail sentence in France, he's the target of anti-corruption sanctions imposed by the UK and has had a fleet of luxury cars seized by Swiss prosecutors. The amount of money that came in, the speed with which money came into Equatorial Guinea from oil so quickly in the 1990s into such a small country with such a distinct political culture has created an environment in which corruption has flourished and which inequality has also increased dramatically. Having spent years covering stories in West Africa, journalist Anthony Goldman knows Equatorial Guinea like the back of his hand. When the president's son, when Teodorin, the vice president, was in court in South Africa and was challenged as to how he has, was able to finance this lifestyle on a modest official salary, he was able to argue that it wasn't illegal in Equatorial Guinea to accept commissions from contractors looking for government contracts. Equatorial Guinea is the only country in the world where the president encourages his ministers and family members to benefit from the country's resources. And in this case, the resource being oil, it will run out. 
Hoping it may lead to Peter and Frederick's freedom, Blue Shadow was released after two weeks. Instead, the two men were sent to a high security prison on the mainland. This prison houses mainly political prisoners and uh, the most dangerous criminals, for whom the government considered that the right of visits and to medical assistance, legal assistance, must be prohibited. Who will ultimately then decide the fate of these men? Well, the final decision rests with the same authorities that ordered their detention, which means the highest political authorities. Back home, the clock is ticking. The families have been in touch with SBM offshore, and the South African government has offered support. But there's been very little news. If you could give a message that you knew would get to your father, what would you say to him? I wanted to say it's not stark. I don't want to say it's not stark. And that I'm not alone. I'm not bad. I'm not fast bad. Peter, come home. We love you. The sad face. On the 15th of March, company representatives managed to visit Peter and Frederick in prison, which they felt was a milestone. But the prospect of real justice is uncertain. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access carte blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.